Thanks for staying with us for Health Beat. Dr. Todd Schlesinger, board certified dermatologist with Roper St. Francis, is here. We're talking about melanoma and the dangers of sun. What is melanoma? Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that is uh, the third most common type of skin cancer in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, it's a cancer that's increasing in um, incidence. Uh, it's a cancer of the cells that produce pigment in the skin. Mm -hmm. And this is something when you hear a melanoma diagnosis, it's something you do not want. It's one of the more dangerous types of skin cancer. It is. In fact, it's the most dangerous type of skin cancer and responsible for three quarters of all the um, skin cancer deaths in the United States. So it is the most dangerous type you can have. So the most dangerous. Who mm -hmm. is at risk for melanoma? Uh, the most common people that are at risk are fair, fair skinned people, mm -hmm. people with a family history, especially in a first or second degree relative, okay. and pe people with a history of excessive sun exposure. And okay. by that I mean people who have had uh, uh, more than two blistering sunburns before the age of 18. Okay, that's most people I know. Mm -hmm, most people. All right. Yeah. So say I'm 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Have I done all the damage I'm going to do, and am I a good candidate for melanoma if I have had several sunburns in my life? It increases your risk by about twofold to have two blistering sunburns before age 18. And studies show that most of your sun exposure actually occurs before the age of 18. So, um, but the damage in your skin is cumulative. It has a memory, okay. and the longer, the more sun exposure that you have. Uh, the higher your risk. So just because I've done damage doesn't mean I, I should um, continue to stay out in the sun. No. I can help myself by covering up with sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And you have some interesting facts about mm -hmm. sunscreens and a new sunscreen that's just been approved or mm -hmm. a new ingredient in a mm -hmm. sunscreen. What is that? It's called Mixoral. Uh, basically this is a sunscreen that's been in Europe since 1993. Um, and it was most recently approved by the FDA in 2006. It's only available in the United States in one product mm -hmm. uh, uh, made by L'Oreal called Mixoral uh, SX. Okay. And basically it's a, uh, a better UVA uh, sunscreen, and I can explain a little bit more about UV rays, but it's a sunscreen that is more what we call broad spectrum. Okay. So it blocks a wider range of light rays than uh, other sunscreens that are currently available. Okay. Um, when it comes to looking at your skin and monitoring yourself or your spouse or your loved ones, We've got some good pictures of, I guess, melanoma, some mm -hmm. dangerous moles, some abnormal looking mm -hmm. things on the skin that mm -hmm. people can look out for, and we can put those up right now. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at right here? Um, this basically shows what we call a dysplastic nevus or mole, and it displays several features that are suspicious. Okay. Um, first of all, we, look at, we, we talk about the A, B, C, D, E's of looking for suspicious moles. This one demonstrates um, A or asymmetry. Um, it okay. demonstrates, uh, if you can see, the different um, sides are not the same. B, it shows border irregularity. Mm -hmm. uh, C, it shows multiple different colors. Uh, and you can't really measure the diameter, but if the diameter of a mole is greater than about six millimeters, uh, which is the, this is another abnormal looking mole, it's greater than six millimeters, as you can see, which is the, about the size of the head of a pencil eraser. Mm -hmm. um, those are suspicious features that we'd like people to look out for on their skin. And the last one is the E, which is, I think, the most important one. Okay. And that is what we call evolution. Evolution is the change of a mole over time. If someone notices a mole on their skin that's changing with time, that's the, one of the most concerning signs that you can have. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an example of a melanoma. As you can see, it's very asymmetrical, has multiple colors, a lot of border irregularity, and looks quite large and it probably was changing with time. And that one's an obvious one for mm -hmm. me to, to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have a few more too that we're gonna put up. Not so obvious. That one is not so obvious to me, mm -hmm. but is that melanoma? That's a melanoma. Okay. And we see lesions all the time in the office that, are, that don't look like much and, they, and you sometimes are surprised they're melanoma, but we have a very um, strict set of rules we go by as far as um, when to take a sample or biopsy of melanoma. And this clearly? That's clearly, that's what we call a nodular melanoma, which is one of the most dangerous types. It's the kind of melanoma that instead of spreading outward, it tends to go downward, and that's when it can get to a blood vessel or a lymph node and be the most dangerous. Is there a certain part of the body where melanoma tends to surface? Most melanomas actually occur on the trunk, uh, but there's a rising incidence of melanoma on the legs in women. Mm -hmm. um, the back and chest are more common in men but it can occur anywhere in the body. And this is a... This um, is a, a foot, yeah. You actually, this is called acro, acrolentigenous melanoma, and that's a term for melanoma that occurs on the hands or feet. As you can see, this is a dark-skinned patient, and it's important to remember that um, African-Americans or other dark-skinned patients such as Latinos, Japanese folks, and other ones can also get melanoma, and the incidence of this type of melanoma in uh, African-Americans, it's, it's more commonly found in African-Americans. The reason 
We don't really know the, the reason why, mm -hmm. but unfortunately melanomas that are diagnosed in African Americans are often diagnosed at a later stage because of a not um, high awareness. People are not quite as aware of looking for that. Okay, so I have something suspicious, say, on my hand mm -hmm. or on my back, and I come to see you. What mm -hmm. will the process be like that I'll go through? Well, first of all, generally in my office, we'd offer you a complete body exam looking mm -hmm. for anything. We'd look at the suspicious spot that you have, uh, oftentimes under a high-powered uh, magnifying microscope called a dermatoscope, okay. um, looking for any abnormal signs or symptoms. Um, also asking you about whether you found the moles changing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd also go through um, some questions about your family history, if you have a personal or family history of melanoma mm -hmm. or excessive sun exposure. And also looking at your skin and seeing your skin type, if you tend to be very fair, mm -hmm. make us more suspicious. And then focusing on the mole, if the mole has uh, abnormal features, um, we most likely would take a sample and the sample is most properly to remove the entire mole for okay. analysis. And then what? And then the mole is taken to a, um, a specialized skin care pathologist that will examine the mole under the microscope and determine whether or not it's a melanoma based on a set of criteria that's been developed. As we all know how dangerous mm -hmm. the sun is and how you see in your profession every day, mm -hmm. do you have patients coming in, oh, I know it's terrible to be in the sun, mm -hmm. but I'm still a sun bather. What do mm -hmm. you say to those people? You know, I try to steer them in the right direction. Uh -huh. I try to tell them it's important to um, protect yourself from the sun as much as possible. It's important to um, be aware of the sun. I might tell them about some things. If I really have to, I might show up a picture you know, mm -hmm. or something like that. But primarily, I'll just talk to them and tell them. And they, most of them know. Mm -hmm. Just like you, they, they already know. They already feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. and so it's like something they, they love the sun. I mean, we, there have been some studies that show that sun does produce endorphins in the body. So mm -hmm. it may produce a good feeling. And so you know, we have an understanding as to why people do enjoy it. Uh, we try to steer them in the right direction. And if they are going to be sun worshipers, worshipers, we just tell them to watch the sun, be careful at certain hours of the day, especially the peak hours between 10 and 4. Okay, and if you can run through quickly for mm -hmm. us um, the UV index, mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? And, UV and index break was it developed, down. Yeah, the UV index was developed by the National Weather Service and the EPA. And basically it is a way to help people um, determine uh, how much sun there how much UV exposure, ultraviolet exposure, we be present the following day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on a scale of 1 to 11, or 11 plus, they say, and it's usually reported on the national you know, weather report. Mm -hmm. It just allows you to sort of be aware of the UV, expo UV um, radiation, so that way you can take extra measures to protect yourself on days when it's highest. And it combines factors that have to do with the ozone layer, mm -hmm. whether or not the ozone is more protective or at least pro less protective on a given day, mm -hmm. and the cloudiness of the day and other factors that they have. But should be wearing sunblock every day, even every day. when you're driving around town yes. and it's cloudy out. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Please stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk with Dr. Paul Barron, surgical oncologist with Roper St. Francis. Stay with us.